Hey, fifth grade and fourth grade, Evan, I can't forget about you. We are going to go ahead and start our first digital math lesson. So every day I'd like for you to come and watch your lesson just like we would in regular math group. Um, and then of course do about 15 minutes of Zern. Uh, fifth grade, I'm also gonna have Khan Academy Khan Academy as an option for you as well. Um, so you can choose between Zern and Khan Academy if you'd like to, I'm gonna make accounts for you. Um, and then I'd like for you to also do some kind of math fact practice. So that could be reflex, that could be flashcards, that could be sushi monster, that could be um, doing sidewalk chalk outside with your math facts. Anything that you can think of to help you continue to do that. Because guys, here's the thing, especially those that are going into middle school next year, we've got to make sure that you're remembering those math facts, um, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, even over the summer, okay? So today we are going to go ahead and start chapter nine. I'm going to go ahead and backtrack just a little bit to what we covered the last couple of days before break because it's been a while, this is a new thing for us. So let's just rewind a little bit and we're gonna go to uh, multiply tenths by a whole number, okay? So I have on our board, I have written four times 0 0.2. Now, what does this expression actually mean? Well, it can be read as two tenths because this two is in your tenths place. Remember, because we have in our place value, we have our ones, then we have our decimal, then comes the tenths place, and then the hundredths place, the thousandths place. Over here, we've got the tens and the hundreds over here. So we remember that with our place value from last year. So this two is actually in the tenths place. So you could actually write that as two tenths, because that's exactly what that is. So here are a couple ways to say it. You could say two tenths being multiplied by four. You could also say four times two tenths. And all of this, guys, just means that there are four groups of two tenths. So if I were to break it down a little bit further for you, this is what it actually looks like. I've got two tenths four times, you ready? So I have 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2. So I have four groups, one, two, three, four, four groups of two tenths. 0 0.2. So go ahead and try this for a second. What do you think the answer is? Pause the video. Try it on your whiteboard. Try it on a piece of paper. Pause it real quick. Okay, guys. So let's go ahead and talk about how we did this. If I have 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2, that's gonna give me 0 0.4, right? And I can do the same thing over here if I want to, 0 0.4. Don't forget to bring my addition sign down. And then I can just add those up. So 0 point, what's four plus four? Eight. So you should have gotten eight tenths as your answer for four times 0 0.2, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some different kinds of problems where we're gonna have a whole number, um, except I am gonna show you one that goes into the hundredths right now because I think it's gonna give you a little bit of a better understanding about when we find the products of these decimals and whole numbers, why we're getting them. I'm gonna to try to show you some different tricks of the trade to help you um, learn some different strategies for multiplying decimals. So let's look at this one. Now, like I said, this one does have a decimal that goes into the hundredths place, but it's okay. I'm gonna show you some different ways to look at this. So I could say that is three holes, okay, three ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring my three down. 
Now I'm gonna look at my 25 hundredths and let me show you a pretty cool way to write this. I'm actually gonna write 25 and I'm gonna write the word hundredths. Just to remind me that that's where that is. Let me scoot this over a little bit. Now, all I actually need to do is take these two numbers and multiply them. So what is 25 times three? Pause the video. Okay, so we have five times three, which is 15. And now remember, we're gonna bring our one over here. Then I have three times two, which is six. And I'm gonna add my extra one, which is seven. So three times 25 is actually just 75. And I'm gonna bring my word hundredths down here now, because I can't leave it out. I've already taken care of this. That's where my 75 came from. So now I'm gonna write hundredths, just to remind myself that I can't leave that out. Now I can get rid of it. Okay, now if you have something that says you need to write your answer in decimal form, you can do it kind of quickly from this. We know from our decimal place value chart that 75 hundredths would look like this. I have zero ones because I have no holes. Okay, it's not 1.75, it's not 3.75. There's really a zero there, okay? So I have zero holes. And then I have 75 hundredths. So that means that my five needs to end in the hundredths place. So there's my seven and the tenths, and there's my five in the hundredths. Okay, so 0 0.75 would be my answer. Now let me show you a different way to look at this. I'm gonna show you some different ways and you can take these to your workbook today when you're doing independent practice to help you. You could also write this same problem like this. Three times, put it in fraction form, 25 over 100 because that's in the hundredths place. So I'm gonna put it over my hundred here. Now, kind of like we did on that first problem together where I just broke it down and added, this is just saying that I have three groups of 25 hundredths. I have 25 hundredths three times. So I am going to come over here and I'm gonna keep writing it in fraction form because sometimes that's easier to see. So I've got one, add, two, add, and I need one more to make three, to make my three groups of 25 hundredths, and so I have it there. Then what you'll do is you just multiply straight across. Remember, sorry, not multiply, add, excuse me, guys. So then you're just gonna add straight across in your numerators, Remember when you are adding fractions, your denominator stays the same. Only when you're finding the product, only when you're multiplying are you going to be changing your denominator, okay? So let's go ahead and add 25, 25, and 25. Well, I'm kind of thinking about it in terms of a dollar. 25 cents plus another 25 cents, okay, that's 50. Then 50 plus another quarter, 50 plus another 25, that's gonna give me 75. And like I said, whenever I am adding or finding the sum of fractions, I'm going to keep my denominator the same. So I end up with 75 hundredths. And then again, if you have somebody that says, please show it to me in decimal form. All right, well, you've got it in fraction form right here. All we need to do is bring it in decimal form. So again, I don't have any holes. I don't have anything out in front of this fraction. It is not a mixed number. So I could put a zero point something if I wanted to, just as a placeholder, but I don't have to, okay? It could look like this as well, 0.75, 75 hundredths. Now, if I wanna put a zero there, I can, okay? So that's another way to look at it. Now let me show you one more way to look at this same multiplication problem. 
I could come down here and I could say three over one, because we know that under our whole numbers, we can have a one there, times 25 over 100 for my 25 hundredths equals what? Well, I already know that 25 times three is what, guys? Good job, 75. And remember, when I'm doing a product, I'm going to multiply straight across on the bottom on my denominator. So I end up with 75 hundredths, okay? Because one times 100 is 100. And then in decimal form, you know, it's the same thing. 75 hundredths. All right, I do have one more way to show you. I just want you guys to see all of these different things. So let's take our whole number of three and I am going to multiply it by one fourth because if I have a whole dollar, I'm gonna make a little number line on the bottom of this. I think that might help you guys. I'm gonna start out at zero and I'm gonna go to one, like one whole dollar. Okay, start out with zero, and then I end up with a dollar or 100, okay? Because 100 pennies equals one dollar. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to break up my dollar bill into four sections. Look at my denominator, that's four. I need four sections, four total equal parts. So one, two, three, and four. Now, if I go ahead and I say, all right, I've got to find one fourth, and I'm on my number line, it's broken up into four sections, one, two, three, and four, and I just need to jump one of those. So my point would be right here on my number line. So I'm actually gonna write one fourth right here. Now, when I think about a dollar, a dollar is how many quarters? Four, right? So I'm gonna put a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, and a quarter. One quarter, one fourth of a dollar, one fourth of 100, one fourth of 100 pennies is the same thing as 25 cents, one quarter. See that? One quarter, it's the same thing. I need you guys to know that one fourth is equivalent to 0 0.25. It's the same thing, okay? That's something that I need you to log into your memory. Just like if I were trying to find three fourths, one, two, three, three-fourths would be here, okay? That's three-quarters at that point. So then three-fourths, oh, let me write it here so you can see. I'm getting a little off track here, but it's important. Three-fourths, ah, three-fourths, can you see it? Yeah. Three-fourths is equivalent to 0 0.75 or 75 cents because you have three-quarters of a hundred of a dollar. All right, so that is why you're seeing on my board 0 0.25, 25 hundredths is the same thing as 1 fourth. Okay, then I can just multiply. 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, and then I am going to keep my denominator the same because it's really just over 1 right? You're not going to do the same thing here. And you're going to end up with three fourths. <laughs> and then look, three fourths. And if somebody says, please put it in decimal form, then you can say, okay, I know that three quarters. So what I just showed you on that number line and rectangle model, that three quarters is the same thing as 75 cents or 75 hundredths. Okay or 75 over 100 if you wanna put it in fraction form. So decimal form, fraction form. Those are 
two totally the same things, okay? All right, I just wanted to show that to you guys because I think it's helpful to look at all of the different strategies that you can use as you're multiplying your decimals. So let's go ahead and multiply some together. Let's say that we have 2.4 times three. Go ahead and get out your 5B textbook and open up to page 37. Pause the video. Okay, if you look up top at step one, it says multiply the tenths by three. So this four is in the tenths place. So I'm gonna do four times three, which is 12. Three times four tenths is 12 tenths. So I'm gonna put my two here and I'm going to regroup. I'm gonna put the one over here because 12 tenths, guys, is equivalent to or equal to one, one, and two tenths. It's the same thing, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and regroup, bring my one, one up here, keep my two tenths down here in the tenths place. Ooh, can't forget to bring my decimal right down from where it is. Ooh, I almost forgot. All right, now I'm ready to go ahead and multiply over here. Step two, multiply the ones by your three. So I have three times two, which is six. Add on my extra one, and that's gonna give me seven. So I had six ones from my three times two plus my one one, which gave me my seven ones. So 2.4 times three equals 7.2. Okay, guys? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some other problems today where we are multiplying decimals by whole numbers. So let's flip to page 38. Let's hop down to uh, number three, okay? Pause. All right, everybody on your whiteboard, on your piece of paper, doesn't matter. I need you to go ahead and write 0 0.2 times three, okay? What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to multiply here. What is two times three? Six, right? Bring down my decimal point, bring it straight down. And then I'm going to multiply what is zero times three. Zero times three is zero. So my answer is 0 0.6. All right. What I want you to do is on your whiteboard or piece of paper, I would like for you to do four, five, and six by yourself. And then we're going to go ahead and come back together and talk about our answers. So pause the video now. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at number four. 0 0.6 times eight. We're going to check our work. What is eight times six? Good job. 48. Bring down my decimal. Eight times zero is zero. Add on my four. Zero plus four is just four. So that's what you should have gotten for four. Okay. Number five. 4.9 times two, nine times two is 18. Carry your one, you're regrouping, just like we did in our first problem. Bring down my decimal point. Four times two is eight, plus your extra one. So you should have gotten 9.8 as number five. All right, let's check number six. 
3.7 times 7. 7 times 7 is 49. Bring down my decimal point. 7 times 3 is 21. Add your 4, 22, 23, 24, 25. So you should have gotten 25.9 or 25 and 9 tenths as your answer for that, okay? You guys are doing a really, really good job. What I want for you to do today, and some of you might have already done, um, done this page in your workbook. <laughs> you know what? Let me rethink this, friends. What I want you to do right now is I want you to read with me page 40 in your textbook, okay? So, Marcus bought three DVDs, so that's where your three is coming from, for $15.45 each. You see that? Right there. How much did he pay in all? So here, guys, they're just breaking it down in steps just like you just did except it's not staying in the tenths. You do see some decimals that go into the hundredths. So five times three is 15. Carry your one. Then here you have 12, okay? And your one, which is 13. Carry your one. Come down here. Three times five, 15, plus your one, 16. Last step, step four. Three times one is three plus your one, which is four. So three times 15.45 equals $46. Just put a dollar sign in front of this, guys, and 35 cents. So he paid $46 and 35 cents in all. Instead of doing a workbook page, I'd like for you to open up uh, your, hmm, Okay, keep your textbook open, flip to page 41, and I'd like for you to try uh, 41, page 41, by yourself. I'd like for you to put that on your whiteboard with all of your answers or on a piece of paper, and then have mom or dad or grandma email a picture of that to me, okay? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have you pause the video and then for moms and dads and grandparents, here are the answers that your kids should have gotten. So if you can double check those to make sure we're all on the right track, okay? And then guys, that's gonna be it for today. And then tomorrow we're gonna look a little bit more at multiplying and dividing our decimals. Awesome job today. See you tomorrow.